Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to talk to you guys about DC Unchained. I covered this game when it was in closed beta. It lost its cold closed beta or it shut down, and now it's officially out in full force version 1.0, basically. Uh, it's a little bit confusing right now because it's actually not released worldwide on both the App Store and Play Store, but if you're clever enough, you can go on Google and you can find out ways to get around that because it is available right now in certain countries. I went ahead and got it and I've been playing it for the past two days. I've been playing on a live stream and I've been having a blast. So I wanted to give you some beginner tips so that when you start out with your account, you can make the right choices and decisions. You can avoid some easy and early mistakes and you can set yourself up for success in the future. So this is kind of like a beginner's tip tutorial kind of thing. Uh, I'm not going to be able to hit on everything because I'm still learning myself, but these are just a bunch of things that I caught uh, in the beginning, and uh, it should give you a leg up uh, when you're playing through the game. So uh, if you're already familiar with the game, or if you're not, it's basically, it plays a lot like Marvel Future Fight. You have heroes, you assemble a team of three, and then you go and you do missions with them. Uh, aside from that, they've uh, taken extra care uh, in this game to divide characters among their faction hero villain and then neutral characters uh, one thing that you should keep in mind is uh, I don't yet know and I don't ask for lists on best characters there's no Sharon Rogers in this game there's no obvious clear choice for an OP hero uh, in the closed beta there was uh, a bit of a disparity between characters Batman was particularly weak as was Superman whereas flash was particularly overpowered he's his uh, kind of character model is dark right now because he's doing a kind of side mission. Uh, they had, they did a lot of balancing actually uh, between the closed beta and now, which I'm very impressed with and it does bode well for the future of this game. Uh, they balanced Flash, they balanced characters like Batman and Superman, they buffed them while nerfing uh, Flash's damage a little bit, so I really don't feel like there's any one character that's super overpowered compared to others. There are definitely certain characters that play better on their own, for example, Ares has a very good uh, leadership ability, and you can see all of this in-game for yourself. You can read all 30 characters' abilities, leaderships, etc. You can even do a free trial of the character, so you can test them out in a limited setting. Um, but my recommendation for you would be, when you get free character selectors, just choose the character you like the best. Keep in mind, though, that certain characters, whether they're hero or villain, that will exclude them from certain events in the game, whether those events are hero or villain exclusive. Uh, but neutral characters will be able to participate in both. So in the case of someone like Larflees, or in the case of someone like Ares, for example, or Catwoman is another good example, they are all neutral. Uh, so they can do uh, villain, hero, uh, and basically both. So that could be uh, one reason why you choose one of those characters over another, but my primary incentive and advice to you is to just choose characters that you like. Um, right now, because there are only 30 characters uh, in the game overall, you can see, you can't see down at the bottom, but it's 10 out of 30. I've had, I have 10 unlocked and there's another 20 locked. Um, it's very difficult to get new characters, so don't expect to be collecting characters every day or even every week. Rather, uh, I think the collection of characters is slowed down to force you to focus on the characters that you do have and to build them up, because there's actually a lot of character building mechanics that you have to go through in order to kind of max out your character. Uh, there's lots of different things that you can spend on to improve their value. There's individual cards, which give individual buffs to the character. There is Valorium, which also buffs the character with various stats, and you can equip different Valorium for different effects. Uh, there's also different ways of auto-playing for that specific character. There's different active skills. You only have three equipable, but there's a total of five. In addition to passive skills, in addition to a unique skill that functions differently, whether they're a leader or a teammate. So there's really a lot to get into for every specific character. So there's really a lot more individual customization and focus. Um, one thing that you will see a lot of is these silver and gold cards at the top. You can see I have one Batman gold card and 18 silver cards. These cards are primarily used to upgrade the power level of your heroes. So for example, I have a C uh, rank level 25 Joker. Uh, if you look at my uh, Flash, he is B rank, which is denoted by the blue color, and he's level 37. So he's substantially stronger than uh, the Joker, both because of his level and because of his rank. The ranks go D, C, B, A, S. I don't know if there's anything past S. 
Um, but in order to increase your character's rank, they need to be at a certain level. To get from C to B, you have to be at 20. And then you have to pay a certain number of silver cards. This should be your primary um, way to spend these silver cards. Don't spend them anywhere else. You're going to find other ways to spend them, like leveling up your character's skills or uh, your leader ability, something like that. Don't. Save them for this, because this is going to provide the biggest bump. You can see it bumps all of their stats. It's going to make them uh, hit harder and miss less in terms of evasion. And it's going to allow you to progress through the story mode and just generally do better in the game. And it's going to smooth out your progression. So that's my first kind of major tip for you. Save all of your silver cards, and especially the gold ones. They're super rare. And once you get to B rank, you're going to need gold cards to go even higher. So in order for me to go from B to A, I need 30 flash cards, which I have 12. And then I need three gold flash cards of which right now I have zero. So that's kind of uh, a big mountain to climb. I could start spending uh, flash cards here, flash family cards here to upgrade his skills, but I'm not going to. Also keep in mind that because it's shared among the entire family, uh, if you are building multiple characters in the same family, it's going to slow down your progression uh, immensely. So my advice to you would be don't do that. I know I did kind of break my own rule by unlocking both Batman and Catwoman, and I do want to unlock Robin as well for the family effect, because there is an additional bonus that you get for having all of the characters in a certain family. You don't want to be actively focusing on building those characters because they share gold and silver cards. So in my case, I'm only going to be focusing on Batman right now. That's why he's over 200 points ahead of everyone else in this family. In the Wonder Woman family, I'm just going to be focusing on Ares. In the Spider-Man, in the Superman family, only Superman. I have no one in the Aquaman family except for Ocean Master, but I don't really care about him, even though he's a good neutral character. Flash family, the Flash, my secondary would be Captain Cold, but that's kind of a ways away. And then for the Green Lanterns, I have gone with both Larflees and Hal. Not too sure what my plan is yet, if I'm going to kind of try to balance them equally, but I wanted another powerful neutral character like Larflees for the dispatch missions to give me more flexibility there. And with the orange, he just looks super cool, so I just couldn't say no to him. Uh, another thing that I recommend that you do is get into a guild as soon as you can. You're going to need to get to uh, your level 4 on your player account, so you're going to have to play quite a bit. But once you get to that level, you'll be able to get into a guild, and the guild is going to offer you a bunch of bonuses. It's going to offer you a guild box. Uh, and it's going to give you additional bonuses when you play with your guild mates. And this game makes it very easy to play with your guild mates through uh, inviting them directly, whispering them, talking to them, uh, you know, one on one. And so you can very easily kind of snowball those effects to improve your um, progression. Another thing you want to take note of is the different types of missions that you can do. In the battle tab, you're going to have your PvP stuff. It's very important to do PvP every day. But it's not as important, and you're not going to unlock it right away, as this tab. The mission tab is by far the more um, important one, because it's going to be where you improve your characters. And that's kind of the basis of the game. Um, story mission is kind of self-explanatory. You do story missions, you progress in the story. You're eventually going to hit a wall. I hit a wall. I, I can probably do a couple of these missions here, but then it's going to become too hard for me. Uh, your primary mode of kind of farming for both experience and items is going to be in the Unchained. Uh, so you want to do Unchained as often as you can. We'll talk about the Dispatch Channel in a second. You want to do uh, Unchained as much as possible. So anytime you have excess stamina, do Unchained. Go with your friends. Go with your um, alliance mates, your, your guild mates, by inviting them here. There's an invite bu button at the bottom that I'm covering. But you can invite either. Uh, prioritize your guild mates because you'll all get extra guild rewards. Um, but this is the mode that I do and I play the most and it gives you the most back. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't repeat old story missions. It's not as effective. In addition, once you get to a high enough level, you'll unlock special missions. Special missions are interesting because they are locked every day even though you've unlocked them already. And upon completing a certain number of story or unchained missions, you'll randomly unlock the special mission once. So my advice to you is as soon as you get the notification that it's been unlocked, go and play it. Because if you um, miss the chance or if you skip it for a few more, who knows when the next time it is that it's going to unlock. So you want to play it once, it'll lock after that, and then you'll be able to unlock it twice more per day by going through story missions or going through unchained missions. In addition, there's something called a vision quest here. Uh, it changes, I believe, every five days or every week. 
and it gives you preset characters at preset strength levels, so you don't have to worry if you don't have the characters or if they're kind of weak, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is more for story than it is for uh, actual difficulty, although there are three difficulties to it. The difficulties just denote how fast it takes you to get all of these rewards. The AP that you get uh, equates to this bar. Once the bar gets to 100 or each of the four you know, m numbers before it, 20, 40, 60, and 80, you get the corresponding reward. So you get the 5,000 gold, the three silver tickets, etc., etc. Uh, so what you can either do is you can play the normal mode, the easiest one, 20 times to get this bar up. You can do the hard mode 10 times or the hell mode five times. My advice to you is play them all. Each one comprises of the three of the same three missions. You have to complete all three in, to, in order to get the full AP reward. So in the normal uh, mode case, you'd get one AP for the first stage, one AP for the second stage, and three for the final stage. You cannot repeat the final stage over and over and over again. You have to repeat them as a group, which is why I think it's more about the story, because it kind of follows through with the villains and the hero and their interaction, and it kind of, kind of tells this tale. Um, you can also have it on repeat by selecting the infinity button, so you can kind of just leave this as autoplay uh, in order to grind out all of these weekly rewards for this specific quest before it changes over. This one has four hours or four days and ten hours left. Um, when it switches over, I will lose the ability to play this one and I'll have a new one, but thankfully I've already finished it. So my advice would be to, uh, you know, get this out of the way as soon in the week as possible so that you don't leave it to the last minute, miss some of the rewards in case you need them, like the 300 gems or something, and then, you know, you have to wait a week or whatever, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks potentially, for it to rotate back in the uh, slot for the active uh, mission. Another thing uh, that you might be asking yourself is gold versus gems. Now, while they do give you gems for completing stuff in the achievement slot and in the guide slot, and you should definitely prioritize finishing these guides because they're easy and they give you nice things like a free character selector uh, and free gems, so you can boost your roster that way. Um, they're actually not that important. I haven't found many good things to purchase with gems. You can go into the store and see what is purchasable with gems but it's just not very impressive to me. If I were you, I would save my gems, don't spend them. Um, if you absolutely have to spend your gems, what I would spend them on is converting them into gold. Believe it or not, at least for now, gold is a much harder currency to come by than gems. I can get less than 500 gold per mission, uh, which makes it a, an extremely hard currency to farm for, and you need it for everything. Ranking up characters, ranking up skills, sending characters out on missions, upgrading their cards. There's literally nothing in this game that doesn't require gold. So uh, definitely be frugal with your gold. Save as much of it as you can. In my case, I lost about 300,000 of it because I had to build my own guild or kind of found the guild. Uh, but what I would suggest is prioritize your gold over your gems. Um, but try to keep all of your gems or as many as you can uh, and then when you do need gold you can use just the small gold box because the the conversion rate is the same whether you go from small all the way up to super gold doesn't matter so just go in 100 gem increments so that you don't blow too much at once uh, the last tip I have for you to start is revolving around the base now this is not something that you're gonna unlock right away you're gonna have to wait until you get to level 5 but once you do this becomes a pretty crucial part of your gameplay. Basically what happens here is you have these four different areas and they, they do different things. The main one you're going to need to focus on at first is the top right hand corner dispatch center. This is where you're going to be able to get these building modules and that will allow you to build other buildings on this map, in this base map. And basically what the other buildings do is they build things for you for free. So they create comics cards for you to equip on your characters. They create Valorium for free and they generate kind of free items for you to equip on your characters. And they generate free stamina recharges for your characters. Um, but you need to build up the dispatch center first in order to have enough building materials to then build those other buildings. So my advice to you, it's kind of a strange way of wording it, but my advice to you is from the dispatch center, build up the command post. I built mine up to level three, allowing me to have three different missions going simultaneously. You can go to two or three. I also ended up building up my tr mission training center to increase the rate of success. If you have a lot of low level or low um, like power heroes, you're gonna have lower success rates in the, in the 80s and the 70s and you could end up failing the mission. I have yet to fail a mission, 
but I've never gone into a mission with less than I would think a 65 or a 70 percent uh, success rate so that might be why but that is my tip for you once you get uh, enough of a building module excess I'm you know building or I'm creating about 300 per day which is quite a lot you can start to move and bring your attention over to the other three ones the obviously the cover lab is for comic cards communication center is for stamina and your friends lists and then the Valorium is for Valorium. Uh, in my experience, from what I found, the Cover Lab is the best one. So I would prioritize building this one as soon as you can, as soon as you feel comfortable with the Dispatch Center. This creates a card for you almost every hour. So that is just fantastic. You get 24 cards per hour if it doesn't stop once per day. I'm going to find out in about five minutes when this is done with, this, with the very first one. This is a beautiful thing to get and to even upgrade uh, to reduce the production time down even faster than one hour. So that's fantastic because with 30 characters, each requiring three cards or three um, uh, comics each, you need a minimum of 90 comics, and that's just for level one. Level two, for every character, for every comic, and they need three each, requires four copies of that one comic to level it from two to three. So you can multiply the numbers and see that it starts to get pretty bananas. Uh, on the other hand, a thing that I would not recommend that you invest in because it's not very good right now, the Communication Center Stamina Potion Production Center. I thought this was going to be a really cool thing. Uh, it creates regular uh, potions for you, and these potions will give you 100 stamina for your character. Each character has their own energy, so you have to manage them individually. But I thought, wow, I can get extra stamina. I can basically just play more. Uh, it takes about four hours, I think four and a half hours or four hours and 45 minutes, almost five hours for your characters to regenerate 100% of their um, energy. So, or it takes 15 energy in 45 minutes. So you can kind of do the math based on that. Um, so I thought this would be great. It takes a really long time. I, I believe it's like, it's one per day. Uh, it takes about uh, 20 something hours for this to uh, complete. I think it's 21 hours. I'm not 100% I'm not sure now, but it's really, really slow. Uh, and so, I would not recommend, it cost me I think 100 or 150 building modules to create. I wouldn't recommend rushing this one. Uh, save your building modules, do the cover lab first, do more of the dispatch center stuff, maybe come back to this later when they've improved it a little bit. Basically I'm only going to be getting one or two stamina potions per day. They give you three for free per day already just from playing, so it's kind of a wash, it's kind of a lame thing to do. Um, but those are my early tips for you guys. I'm going to have some gameplay tips for you. These are just some kind of wider account level tips uh, to give you. If you are interested in what I've purchased so far, I can talk about it in a later video. But I have made some small purchases already, uh, both to support the game and to find out kind of what's good, what's bad as far as your investments go. Right now, the only thing that I would recommend for sure is a limited $1.30 pack that gives you a free character uh, unlock. So you basically get a free character for a dollar and thirty cents. Really great value. If they bring it back, I'll probably buy it again because that's really going to rapidly increase how often you can collect characters to get closer to that magic number of thirty and to get you know everyone that you want on your team. So let me know what you guys think of DC Unchained. Let me know how you found the game so far. If you've been playing it or if you haven't yet. Hurry up and catch up with the rest of us. If you want to see more, you can hit me up on Twitch because I'm playing it pretty regularly. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.